All right, it's time for us to start again with the last panel from day 1.5, building abstract Wikipedia using Wikidata like scenes. The speaker is Mahir Morshed, also known as Mahir256, admin on Wikidata. And one of the uh, users that is most in involved with uh, Lexemes am among the, the Breton users and others. And well, Mahir, now the floor is yours, please. Okay, thank you. Um, it is great to be here. Uh, I'm sorry I have, wasn't able to make many of the other um, sessions before this. Uh, I, I had a busy day today, but I am here and I'm happy to talk about um, this topic, which is something that I am trying to actually try to realize instead of waiting for, <laughs> instead of waiting for um, wiki functions to reach a point where I can just do it uh, on wiki data or on wiki functions itself. So first of all, why do we want to build abstract Wikipedia with Wikidata like scenes? Uh, why do we not do it with entire with other things, things that work with strings or things that are very ad hoc, if you will? Um, so first of all, the idea is that if we want to improve the output from the system, we should improve Wikidata. There is no pretext that's involved. There's no string injection, so to speak. If you want to improve anything, you need to improve the lexemes that are involved because you know lexemes are represent words and phrases and concepts, and we're trying to combine those concepts into a coherent whole. At the same time, the underlying functions that power this um, are essentially based on rules. They're based on grammars, most likely, and you know trends that can be referenced, that can be um, codified in some form. Uh, and so the idea is to turn those rules into functions, hopefully wiki functions in the near future, but functions nonetheless. At the same time, you know, when there is an ambiguity in the output, we want to be able to also figure out, okay, what does a part of this output actually mean, and where in the abstract content that we're we're trying to define should, does it does it come from? Um, where does a particular part of the output originate? And more most importantly, and actually something that I'm trying to work on starting this week is to make it hopefully easier to add to in terms of adding new languages, adding new constructors for abstract content adding ways to turn that abstract content into sentences, if you will. Uh, there's a nice technical description of, um, under review of um, how the system sort of works on the back end, if you're interested in that sort of level of technical detail. But that, these are basically the gists behind what I'm trying to do. Um, and again, just to go through the process of how we actually you know, build abstract Wikipedia with Wikidata Lexemes, we're first going to need some abstract content. And then we need some lexicographical data um, as, as sort of two ends of a contribution sliding scale, if you will. Um, and then you go back in the, and then you, you add constructors uh, or define these things. Uh, and then also functions to form sentences, form do things with putting words together, putting morphemes together, if you will, um, as again, two ends of the same sliding scale of contributions. And then somewhere in the middle, there needs to be a way to turn to directly interface, you know, abstract content with um, with these functions that put together sentences, and that those are what are called renderers. And then once we have all five parts of these of, of this scale implemented, then we can render something and then maybe profit from it. I don't know. We'll find out. Um, this overall system has several parts, which I've given names to for most for the most part. Um, there's this first part, Ninai and uh, which turns abstract content into syntax trees, which are basically these diagrams of how a sentence is structured, if you will. Um, Udiron is a similar tool, except that it turns the syntax trees into strings, strings of text like the ones I can select here. Um, there's an underlying library which I developed to make accessing Wikidata in Python very um, somewhat more straightforward. And actually, just uh, as a heads up, this all of this is implemented in Python right now. For the simple reason that you know, in, in the future, once Wiki Functions is developed to up to a certain point, this this software, like almost verbatim, can be um, can be essentially ported to Wiki Functions. It can be turned into Z objects for various functions, implementations, objects. Uh, it's being de designed sort of in that way, um, which may or may not conflict with the note idea of making it easy to contribute to. But that's a discussion for a different day. So to, to go through these steps sort of one by one, we should first talk about um, creating abstract content, essentially. Uh, how do we do this? Um, uh, how, and the question, there's also the question that should recurs is, how should it look? Um, 
one way that it might look is sort of like this, where all of the abstract content is essentially different nested lists of queue items uh, and uh, possibly other strings, such as this date, uh, which appears in the, uh, in the string right uh, here. But that's very daunting. It, it's very daunting to look at right now, and I'm not endorsing that it should be looked at this way. Uh, more on that towards the end of the session. Um, but if we translate these into at least English labels, uh, we're going to get something like this, where each of these items is used to represent a particular concept, which, you know, if, if it starts with, a, with an open parenthesis, it's assumed to be a constructor, uh, as in we're defining, for example, a predicate um, or, or, or basically a sentence, if you will, using this constructor, which has the name predicate. We're defining a location inside of which something is happening using this thing called inessive. And we're defining you know, when something is occurring using this thing called timestamp. Um, but uh, underlyingly, these are still you know, uh, Wikidata items that are used to represent these things as names. The idea being that you could also you could take this representation and then translate all these I items into using into French labels. And then you, a French speaker should have some idea of what this is doing uh, at the same time. Um, you'd get something, something like this. Um, and actually, um, in the Python code, if you were to do this entirely in Python, the, out, the thing you would use would look something like this uh, instead, where, um, where these capital C constructors um, are actually just sort of like functions. Um, and if you've ever used the composition syntax in wiki functions, this should remind you of how that, um, that syntax looks. All it is is just nested you know, functions upon functions, which is sort of what inspired the, the, the notion of abstract content within um, the system in the first place. Um, so that's essentially what, what we're going to look at. And um, you know, we can, if we had more time, we would likely want to talk about uh, how do we define our own, um, we're talking about what kinds of other constructors what might we need. But that's, a, that's very much a mental exercise uh, meant for you know, when you decide to design a, a way to model abstract content, you're gonna, need, you're, you're gonna need to think about, okay, how, what kinds of abstractions do we need? Um, so that's essentially what, what goes into this. Um, once we have these things, these capital C constructors, though, we can go to the other end of the contribution scale and just improve lexicographical data. Those of you who contribute to Lexemes uh, and already do this, um, very good for you. Um, I'm very happy about that. But sometimes there's information about these things that, um, you know, it, it, it's worth pointing out the, the information that's useful for abstract content generation for, for content rendering purposes that's, um, that's, that's very useful throughout this uh, entire process. So for example, we have uh, a noun with um, two meanings. We link them, these meanings using a, a, a property called item for the sense, where the item for this, where the lexeme sense meaning like soul is linked to the item for soul, and the lexeme sense meaning heart is linked to the item for heart. It's also linked via synonym and translation to other lexeme senses. So that even if we don't know what the um, specific lexeme is for the word meaning heart in your language, if they're linked to you know, the same item, um, this is the item for heart, of course, then we'll still be able to get from, um, um, a, from a Wikidata item to a, a lexeme sense uh, with the same meaning as heart. That was the, the idea behind um, the, the last bullet point uh, in the main parts of the system, which is um, a, a tool to go from items to lexemes. Um, and if, we, if you look back at the abstract, abstract content, all of it is like is uh, lexemes for the most part, or, or is items for the most part. Uh, very few lexemes uh, used in that abstract content. Um, another thing that that uh, can be sometimes useful is to distinguish, you know, the semantic gender of a particular entity if the item is not um, so distinguished. You know, we have a, an item for a love deity, but this particular lexeme in Estonian has uh, the specific semantic gender, uh, male, uh, female. I guess I used the wrong item here. But the uh, there's the equivalent for uh, a male deity is marked as uh, semantic gender male. Maybe these aren't the right uh, semantic genders, but that's a question for a different day. Um, similarly, if you know um, different, a lot of languages which are spoken in various places have specific uh, locations where a particular sense is used. So this is a, a, a lexeme sense for bread roll, which is used in a particular part of Sweden, uh, and it's marked this way. See, even in English and German, there are lots of, lex of uh, lexeme senses for a bread roll, which are used in very different places. I have never heard these things used in the United States, for example. Um, similarly, uh, we could be, we could also um, make distinctions between, you know, in, in the event that there are languages that are 
treated as separate entities um, in different places, we can say that, okay, this particular word for January is used in Iran, whereas this particular word for January is used in Tajikistan. And I believe these have different uh, derivations, one from Russian, one from French. So that would be semantic information. Um, so didactic information is actually very important because this is how we're modeling um, the, ultimately the, the functions that are used in the, in the system to uh, produce these sentences have to sort of um, yield um, sentences in, in, in a very similar fashion. So, so basically what I mean by that is we have something like climate activist in Swedish, which is composed of two parts, climate and activist. There's a relationship between these two, which we've marked with this particular qualifier. Uh, and, um, you know, there's, there's a number of other um, lexemes here which are marked this way, um, you know, more activists, uh, you know, refrigerators, uh, the verb for to love in Korean, uh, and the verb for to request in uh, Persian. Each of those is marked uh, in terms of its syntactic relations because these relations are essentially what drives the production of sentences uh, in the underlying system. You know, even for Cantonese, we can do this uh, on a character basis. And for verbs, actually, sometimes this, this uh, verb can have multiple meanings because one of the parts of this verb has multiple meanings. And we can specify the meanings um, that are used here by, um, well, first of all, we can use um, uh, this predicate for relationship um, and see how it aligns with the item for the sense relationship. But also in a um, like seem sense like uh, to request, we can make it explicit that the meaning of this first word in, in in the verb for to request is this specific sense on the verb for to request um, or in the word for request where you see we have a link back to request and this is the predicate for request that that is the case because this lexeme you know, it has the meaning request um, you know being able to specify these things the more things that are specified in lexemes the, the better um, hence why I state that you know to improve the output of the system you have to output you have to improve Wikidata. And just to make it very clear um, uh, about you know, how much um, syntactic relationships are important, this is an entire proverb lexeme. It's, it's basically a sentence. So, so conceivably, we could get something out of this from the system uh, as a whole. But we see that every one of these you know, parts is marked for, for syntax. Uh, and you know, we get a nice little tree out as a consequence, um, where we, this is ultimately a sentence about um, about, I guess, slices that fall, um, and uh, whoever plans, uh, or, or whenever a uh, plan is made, slices will fall, or something like that. Sorry, I don't speak German, and I forgot what this meant. Um, but, uh, but this is true for uh, a number of other languages as well. You know, here's a Turkish uh, proverb where not only the, ver the words, the base words, but the individual morphemes, uh, you know, like, it, it's a very suffixing language, and so each of the suffixes has um, a, a uh, lexeme that's uh, linked to this. So that information is uh, actually very important and will be very useful to, to it's, it's a useful thing to know for the following slides because, well, um, we have uh, the, the following parts of this um, presentation deal with Turkish because it's an interesting language to try to clean up so that, uh, you know, looking at the code, it'll be easy to understand what's going on. Um, first of all, we need to add some constructors and we can talk about, okay, how do we define some? Um, this is where this slide comes into play. Please don't uh, uh, don't fret. Uh, basically, the idea here is that we have um, something like uh, there are there are exactly three lines that you actually need to to define your own um, constructor, and this part is just documentation. Basically, we're saying that this constructor means that uh, the concept that's inside it, we're talking about being inside that concept. So I am in the park, for example, uh, or I walk into the park in the case of this uh, relationship. Uh, and really, there's little, there's nothing else to it. Um, you're, you're basically, yes, shavings, chips, splinters. Thank you, Nikki. Um, uh, that's good to know. Uh, but uh, honestly, once you have these constructors defined, you're done, and you could use them to define abstract content. Um, but and you know, we can do this as well for very specific, um, you know, sort of meta relationships, if you will. So if we want to talk about, you know, I, you. Or, or we or they, um, we could define constructors that resolve uh, to this or that should be resolved to uh, something like that. Um, and, and they would be defined in exactly the same way. Uh, now, once we've defined constructors, we need to add some functions to sort of edit the syntax 
you know, put actually put the sentences together and modify them at, at, if need be, depending on what uh, other information we have. Uh, and honestly, like when you look at the um, code for the, the Turkish um, like functions, there's really here, this is actually just like two lines of code. This is a definition and then a single line. And most of these functions are kind of like this. This is all just documentation, just to let you know, okay, what's actually going on. And uh, I'm trying to be a bit diligent by um, in, in designing this by you know, specifying, okay, what, where am I getting this information from? This happens to be a grammar that I'm reading, which has been very helpful in you know, making decisions uh, one way or another about how to do things. And a lot of these other functions, um, like this here, here's a function that adds a suffix to a uh, uh, lexeme. Here's a function that marks a particular case and a function to check whether a lexeme has that case. Um, and yeah, most of the functions here are kind of are pretty simple like that. Um, and in principle, you know, once as time passes, you know, other functions that will be used for, you know, working with syntax trees in your language will be similarly uh, simple, hopefully. Um, now, once we have these, you know, syntactic functions, okay, we need to add some renderers. Um, the renderers again are the parts that take the abstract content parts and then use this in the functions that put sentences together, essentially. Um, so when we go to this list of renderers, we actually don't have, we, there's at least three lines that we need to define. Um, and, and the only things we really need to specify, okay, what language are we rendering into? And what's the name of the constructor that we're trying to render? And we see that some of these can be, are pretty short. Um, and then there are others which can be a bit longer, but are at least fully um, understandable from, from, a, from just looking at it. So here we, we're trying to find a sense for this Turkish word meaning inside. We're trying to mark it with the genitive. And then we create a postpositional phrase using that word and then um, the particular object of the, of the postposition um, from, that we retrieve from somewhere else. Um, and there's more to that in the technical description um, that I linked, and I can probably link again uh, if, desi if so desired. Um, but essentially, the, the renderers are also, also going to be very simple to write. Um, and there are, there are actually functions that are needed to um, turn the syntax trees into sentence, into strings. Depending on your language, those could be very simple. You know, if, it, if your language is very isolating, like Mandarin or I guess Thai does this as well. But if your language is like Turkish, where lots of combinations do very different things because of how sounds work, then that func those functions might be a bit more complicated. But hopefully, those will be uh, will look a less a lot less so um, in the near future. Uh, once we have these things defined, we can try rendering this abstract content, and this is where uh, this is where something uh, really I'm really excited about uh, is uh, I, I can finally unveil. This is essentially a Front end hosted on Toolforge for the uh, that for the system that I'm uh, that I've designed, um, and you can see that, that that if we go back to um, I guess what slide was this slide five, you'll see that, that this is the abstract content that I mentioned before, and that here Q196626 that is the con that is the abstract content uh, for context, and for Q179080 that's uh, for predicate, and again all of these for the most part resolve to um, resolve to essentially I, uh, items, if you will, and we can modify each uh, parts of this, you know, as much as we want. You know, we can check, we can say instead of using liquid water here, we'll use refrigerator, uh, and then again, all and then basically this abstract content is the same um, uh, thing as as I showed in the other slide. We can choose a language to render to. Again, right now uh, we just have Turkish. We can copy a link to this abstract content. Um, you know, so that if you wanted to mess with it yourself, you could totally do that. And then when we click render, we get something out. Um, it, it takes a bit of time because, uh, you know, there's a lot going on, but uh, we see we have a sentence, uh, which I believe translates to, I will, uh, I will give you the refrigerator in, uh, in the, the, the suburb of Galata. Uh, Galata is a suburb of Istanbul. Um, What's actually really fascinating about this is that we don't actually, and we're talking about a refrigerator, but there isn't a lexeme meaning refrigerator in Turkish. So we're actually generating one from the words for snow and uh, cabinet here, um, because, and this is where I will go back to one of these other slides, 
If we look at the lexeme for refrigerator in Cantonese, we, we see that it's a compound and it has these two parts linked this way. And these two parts have different meanings where the first part means snow and the first part means cabinet. And so because Turkish doesn't have a lexeme for refrigerator, we're just making the word snow cabinet um, because we can. Maybe your language has another, you know, compound for refrigerator, which has different, where the parts have different meanings. And those parts can be used as well, um, assuming that the parts have um, uh, Turkish meanings as well. Um, and again, the, these outputs can be analyzed. Okay, which meaning of, of uh, this word are we using? It's, uh, the, it's the second one. Uh, and most of these, I think, only have one sense. So we're just using the first senses of each of these. Um, but if uh, Lexeem has multiple senses, then we can see, okay, which lex sense are we using? And which inflection are we using, too? Um, you know, we, we, some of these are marked for different cases, like nominative and dative and so on and so forth. Um, so, and actually, um, both the, the verb and some of the suffixes can be marked for things like, you know, person and singular, depending on what we specify to be, you know, the, the subject. And, uh, or in this case, we're using more gen general semantic relations like agent, patient, and so on and so forth. Um, so that's uh, basically it. Um, that's basically it. Uh, and I'm happy to take questions. We have, I've gone through a lot uh, very quickly, but I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you, Mahir, for your presentation. Uh, is there anyone that wants to raise uh, their hand or ask a question in the chat? I saw lot of, lots of comments, but no questions for now. So. Mm. Okay. It's still very much under development, and I do want to add more explanations of how things work soon. Um, my, my hope is that I don't have to do as much to add stuff for other languages, as much as you can do that. that, that that's, again, an explicit goal that I'm trying to work towards. Um, and I think shorter functions and, and more explanations are a way to do that. Um, what can people who don't program do to help you? Um, well, um, yeah. yeah, so basically the, the, the step zero, I guess, uh, which I've marked here as improve lexicographical data. Um, and by improve, I don't mean, like there are some language communities which are just adding lexemes with, without even senses. Um, and by, and while well, that's an improvement in one sense, the the ability to use that information in generating natural language is not is where it is very difficult uh, because there's a lot of cleanup to be done there's um uh, and, and even if your your functionality is tolerant to those kinds of differences in how you model something um that can end up being very difficult to reconcile later if, if, if when you have um when you need to add new functionality or there's some information which is just entirely absent uh, in terms of how something works um you know, um, so and and honestly, just uh, like just ask. Um, I am I am available as not as this, uh, well, although I will probably uh, I will probably improve. Uh, I will probably respond to questions on this. Yes, would love to see uh, more demos on context-based languages. Um, you know, it's a funny story, uh, Yu Chang. I was um, thinking that if I had more time, I would try to add support for Cantonese uh, live. That's sort of why I had the refrigerator lexeme made. Um, so that, uh, and, and also I, I think I added a few other lexemes um, as well. Um, yeah, I, I wish I had uh, more time before this to add support for uh, things like that. But uh, at least in terms of lexemes that we do have, we could make something like, uh, I guess here's we. Um, I thought I had to eat someplace, but maybe I'm mistaken. Um, yeah, here's to eat, and then um, I guess here's here's beef, and then here is where is the past marker or perfective marker. So in principle, we 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 I I would love to have generated a sentence based on something like these four lexemes, or done something more comp complex, but. Um, Alas, I've not found the time to do this, and I still need to write up more explanations so that hopefully you can write something like this for 
uh, Cantonese or, or Minnan or what, whichever language you speak. Uh, yeah. Sorry, it was muted. Mm -hmm. uh, any, okay, um, there's a question from Tuka, just came, uh, came in now. How does this progress on abstract Wikipedia compare to the similar GFpedia demo by the grammatical framework? That is a very good question, um, which I could answer at length, but I'll basically say this. Um, this GFpedia thing, which is, you mentioned, does not rely on Wikidata like seems, first of all. It does not rely on uh, the, the ability to add to this to this system requires you to learn uh, basically an entirely new language um, so that even those who are able to program still need to learn this language to make things work. Uh, and third, it, it's difficult within the system to, um, within that system, as far as I understand it, to um, add references to how, for how things work and to improve upon it in a sort of real time fashion, if you will. Um, whereas um, at least what, what the system that I'm trying to build uh, is set up so that um, you know you could that, that there's a part that has to remain up. That's the part that um, that would be um, this part, which tries to go from Wikidata items to like seam senses. While that part is active, the rest of it can be designed sort of live. You know. Um, in principle, you, you you could do this on wiki functions if all of these parts were reported. Whereas with GFPD, I don't believe that is um, that it is possible. Um, at the same time, um, I, I guess one last thing I could say is that um, the notion of abstract content is very much um, driven by community members. They could again define their own constructors in in a very simple fashion, um, and then for their languages, define renderers that um, that actually do something um, with those constructors. Whereas, I, as I understand it, the out, the sort of layout of a GFPD article is very, very fixed. Um, it's very much um, not something that you could change very easily um, as far as how abstractly the information represented in that article is. Whereas with um, whereas with the the with this system, you can even um, uh, add like this is actually not. Um, this is actually just controls the, the tense of this verb here, where uh, at, according to uh, the time, and you could specify this in the abstract content if you desired. Um, it doesn't have to be realized as a um, as a word, but it, it does appear as as an effect for other um, uh, for, uh, applied to other lexemes. Um, does, does that answer your question, Tukka? Um, I, I do want to work on Finnish at some point. Uh, there are enough lexemes in Finnish that I could. Uh, try to do something with that. And I do want to do that uh, at some point in the future. Hi, Nicola. I can't hear you, Luca. Still can't hear you, Luca. Sorry, again muted. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> it, it's just too late for me. Anyway, thank you very much, Mahir, for uh, for answering. Thank you much. Thank you very much, Tuka, for uh, for the question. All the people here for uh, for uh, for their questions. Since people are already leaving, uh, I would like uh, to give them a good night too. But we still have some more, couple of minutes left. So if there are any more questions, please let that come in. Yeah, there's a hogu. I I saw that they are going to ask yes, something. Now I oh, have time. time. Now I yeah. have time. I hope it will not work as I switched on the Wi-Fi again. What automatic is switched off at mm -hmm. 0 p.m. Now I have a question about data the data structure, because what I have think about, and you showed that too, so do they make them many API requests if then if you need different vaccines like, forms, for example, or have you think about how far it is possible? As I think at least 
most of the vaccine data should not change regularly after it is constructed once to have kind of a local dump in so, the to integrate in the tool so that then no API requests to Wikidata are necessary. Um, as far as how Wiki functions will deal with this, that is a question for them. Um, with respect to the implementation that I'm using, um, in, in, with respect to LMWALA specifically, um, so whenever a um, Lexeme is retrieved in LMWALA, it's kept, it's cached for about five minutes, although you could adjust this time period depending, like if you downloaded this yourself and tried to run it yourself, you could um, change the amount of time that things are cached. Um, for This is true of Lexemes. Uh, for the actual graph of linkages between wiki items and Lexeme senses, that is that stays in memory a bit longer and, um, and mainly because you, know, you have to rebuild the graph each time that you uh, introduce uh, a new sense relationship. Uh, between a wiki item and a Lexeme sense. Um, so I wouldn't say, and, and there are no requests to the API on Wikidata for those for trying to find those linkages because, well, um, there is no API for that. Um, so, uh, it, but but the the concern you have is warranted, and that's why there are caches that are in place uh, so that Wiki, Lexeme retrievals do not take up too many network requests. Uh, 